HoofCB 0.26 was released a little bit ago and this video I'm going to cover several of its new features. Uh, I'm showing you right now is a list of uh, most of the important ones. So 360 and fisheye camera support has been added. Uh, deep learning also known as concurrent neural networks for image classification is now available. Um, a new calibration target. Added an application for generating calibration targets. YAML is now used for storing calibration intrinsics. Um, a precise black ellipse detector has been added. Improvements to hug features, improvements to binary fiducials, um, and also improvement for template matching. A nice and easy to use GUI um, for launching examples and demonstrations. And um, I've dropped support for Java 6 and a uh, version of Java 7 is now required. And um, no one will miss it, but applets have been removed or at least applet support has been removed. Before I get into all the demonstrations, let me cover how you check out BoostDB. In um, the command line I'm showing you right now, you can see that um, dash dash recursive has been included in the command to check it out from GitHub. What this will do is check out all the sub-modules automatically. This takes a few minutes because there's actually quite a bit of data in the data directory, so we'll skip ahead until it's done. Well, that's done. So let's go through and build BoostCV. BoostCV uses Gradle um, to build, and uh, Gradle will automatically download all dependencies. This also takes a couple of moments, but still much faster than most C++ libraries. Okay, so the main library has been built, and it's now time to build a demonstrations application. To do that, you type in Gradle demonstrations, and this will just take a few seconds to compile. And when it's done, you will have a jar that you can launch. And um, this will let you run through all of the demonstrations in BoostCV easily. So I'll just wait another moment. Done. OK. Uh, demonstrations, demonstrations jar, launching. See this list on the left? You can navigate through and then double click on any of these items to launch that demonstration. Let's start by looking at a 360 camera demonstration. This will be under distortion and um, Echo Rectangular Pinhole app. Now an Echo Rectangular image as shown on the bottom is a uh, 360 uh, camera view that's encoded in a 2D image. The um, X and Y axis represent a longitude and latitude. While it's nice that you can see the full 360 view, as you can see it also looks a bit distorted. For example, um, you can see the hand on the bottom, how it's stretched out for the whole image, but on the top, which is a, a pinhole rendering of the view, um, it's much less distorted. Same is true for the rest of it. And in robotics, um, you can use a 360 camera to view a whole room at once, but a lot of algorithms can't really handle um, highly distorted fisheye or eco images. So a potential pre-processing step is to convert it into the pinhole view, as you see up here. This app lets you experiment with changing the field of view. Um, you can see I just made it much larger. And you can also start to see some perspective distortion um, in the pinhole view. You can also use to make it smaller, change the size of the pinhole, which also shrinks down because the, uh, damn it, the image is shrunk to fit the view. OK, so enough of that. Now I'm going to talk about a new calibration target that's supported in BooCV. This is called Asymmetric Circular Grid. And it's not really a feature that anyone requested, but I was kind of curious why um, chessboard patterns are much more popular than circles, even though a lot of the earlier papers all use circles. I believe the answer to that is that um, chessboard patterns are much easier to code up. Like, I don't really notice that much of a difference between um, these and other ones, but um, you can now do it in BoostCV. And it actually works pretty well. Um, this little app here I actually use for debugging, and you can click on different features. Uh, what's showing you here is the tangent lines between the circles. Um, this shows you the order. I can show you the detected shapes and then hide everything else, as well as zoom in. Um, quite a bit. Um, and then you also can look at the contours. Uh, contour, there it is. 
this is useful for when you're debugging and kind of want to see. But that's it for um, asymmetric circular grids. Next up, I want to show you a demonstration of image classification. But that's an example, not a demonstration. So I need to close this app and launch the demonstration or a example uh, application, which I'm building right now. So this will take a moment. Once it's done, which it should be momentarily, any second now, any second, there it goes, okay. Example, examples. Okay, so select recognition and then select, uh, oh, what's it, image classification. Oh, so the first time you run this, it will uh, need to download the um, network model, which was pre-trained using Torch. In this case, it takes a few minutes and you can see the progress in the text terminal at the bottom, which you can see is slowly ticking. So we're going to cut now and come back in a couple seconds. Okay, the network model is done downloading and we're gonna launch the application again. And once it's been downloaded, you don't need to download it again. So here it's going through and processing all these different images and computing their classification. So you can see it processes this image here and um, the highest ranking is an airplane followed by a deer. And you can see it thinks these are airplanes also. Here's a bag. Um, however, um, this is for C, it was trained off the CIFAR 10 data set and um, it did not include a labeled image for a bag of nuts, so it thinks it's a horse. Um, currently, there's two models which were trained both in Torch and loaded using DeepBoof, included with Boof CV. However, you can add your own. Um, you just need to make sure you read through and translate um, the image processing and some other stuff um, from Torch over to Boof CV properly. But it's um, definitely fairly reasonable. Another improvement in the latest version of the Boost CD is that um, HOG has been improved. HOG stands for Histogram of Oriented Gradient and is a popular descriptor used in a bunch of like uh, people detection, face detection, as well as other problems. Uh, I'm just showing you a demonstration app that helps you visualize how HOG works. And um, inside the squares, it shows you the intensity of the gradients in different direction. Um, the improvement in this version of Boof CV is that um, a new implementation, which is uh, more, I guess, uh, closer to what the original author described in his paper. Um, before, it was something I kind of coded up and I accidentally misinterpreted. However, my misinterpretation is actually much faster and uh, very similar to um, what I guess some people refer to as fast hog. But I haven't bothered to see if it's exactly the same or not. Um, you can see the code for um, a description of the differences between these two algorithms. I'm just going to now show you some different things in this little application. Uh, switch back to FastHog. You can see the slight differences. Okay, enough of Hog. Uh, earlier I showed you asymmetric um, calibration targets. Those were composed of black circles. Um, a side effect that is we now have I pressed the wrong button. We now have a black ellipse detector. And what this will do is find all the black ellipses in the image to a very high level of precision. Uh, the latest Snapshot Boof CV actually has a demonstration app which allows you to tune all the different parameters. Uh, this is actually much better than your um, ellipse fitting to contour. Uh, since this doesn't actually do all the subpixel precision stuff it does. I mean, it'll find a contour around it which is actually biased and it'll be shifted a little bit in the image. However, if you use the black ellipse detector, it'll be unbiased. Another new feature of this version of Boof CV is the addition of a application for creating calibration targets of any size, shape, for any type of paper. First, let's go build it. So this will take a second to build and it's done. Next, let's go run the application without entering any commands. This should print out help. So this describes all the command line arguments that you can put in. 
and so that I don't have to do another take of this uh, segment, I'm going to run it in a different window. So here's a complete command. Um, this will tell it to run the calibration target generator, and then a target will have eight rows, five columns, output file will have target, and then the postscript um, it will add. Dash T tells it which target type. So this is going to be asymmetric circle. The um, units will be centimeters, and then um, the width of a circle will be two, and then the distance between the diameters is six centimeters, and it will do it to letter size paper. Okay, so it just generated everything, and let's go take a look at. Um, so I tell it target, so it's your target.ps. Yep. Okay, let me get this whole thing and view the video. So here's a document I just created. Um, let's go zoom in a little bit, if it will let me. I just want to show you a little feature on the bottom. Okay, so on the document, it also will print down what made it, in this case, BoofCV, um, and then tell you incorrectly that's a square grid. I will fix this bug in the next version of BoofCV. Um, that's an eight and a half, or eight by five grid, has a diameter of two and a separation of six centimeters. Um, so this way you don't need to look it up each time. And um, so that's it for the calibration target generating app. Template matching has recently been improved in Boof CD. Uh, let me bring that over here. Okay, so this is an example of um, template matching in Boof CV, and these you kind of need to look at the code to see exactly what it is. But these squares represent different techniques being used to match um, one of the features, and then this image over here on the left is an intensity of for one of the template matches. And um, I'm not a huge fan of template matching. I think it's um, yeah, just very brittle. Doesn't work in anything real world. However, a lot of people like it. And um, what the improvement is, is an FFT-based um, approach for correlation has been added. This runs much faster on large images than the pretty much convolution-based approach.